So on day three of sinusoidal applications, we're going to do some word problems that have to do with tides, one of my favorites since I'm a scuba diver, and also uh, from, from a financial world, a financial application um, on how sinusoidal functions work there. So the first example, the high and low tides for a small fishing dock are listed as the low tide happens at 3 a.m. and it's 10 feet low tide, and the high tide is 24 feet at 12 p.m. All right, so, uh, and then a low tide again, so one complete cycle at 9 p.m. So if you think about from 3 a.m. to 9 p.m., now, on something like this, when we have times, it's almost easier to put it in military time. So this would be at 0300 hours, and this would be at 2100 hours. All right, and 21 minus 3 leaves us, 21 minus 3, oops, 21 minus 3, I'm just making sure, that's an 18 hour for our period. So 2100 minus 300 gives us an 18-hour period to fit, complete one cycle. All right, so then we have an... Okay, so I was just sort of labeling the y-axis, and this would be in feet. All right, and if I take the 24 feet plus 10 feet, and divide that by 2, that's 34 over 2, which would equal 17. And that is my amplitude. If I take 24, or that's my center, I'm sorry. Center, maybe I should do, redo that. 17, and that's my center, because I averaged the two values. If I take 24 minus 10 divided by 2, all right, that gives me 14 over 2, which is 7, and that's going to be my amplitude. All right, so it starts at, or, oh. all right, so, uh, all right, anyway, so my sender is going to be at 17, all right, which is about right there. And my amplitude is 7, so it's going to go down 7 from there, uh, to, and it starts at 3, 3 o'clock, it's at 10, and it goes up 7 from there, so uh, 17 plus 7 is the 24, and it's going to be right in the middle of from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, All right, so right at noon, we're going to be at 24 feet, because it's going to go 7 above, all right, which would be at 24, around right there. All right, so we have our sinusoidal function. So assuming the tide follows the pattern, write the equation for the depth of water in terms of time. So we're starting at a low point, so it's going to be a, a low of negative 7 cosine of pi over, oh, this would be b is 2 pi divided by 18, which is pi over 9, I forgot to write that, times x minus 3, because we're not starting at the y-axis, we're starting at 3 for our low point, all right, plus 17. So we start up at 17, all right, and we go up, and it, on my scale doesn't look very good, so we go up and down 7 from there. All right, and then his boat needs a depth of water of 18 feet. Anyway, so this is our equation. And in part C, if 
uh, the captain's boat needs 18 feet of water to be able to deliver goods, all right, we need to know when, if this is 18, when do, does the, what is the time when those two points happen? Because between those two times, that's the only time the captain would be able to, uh, to deliver goods. So if I put this one into Y1, and Y2 would be 18, and I see where they intersect. And the first intersection is 7.911, all right, to 16.089 hours. Now, if I take 0.911 times 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, that means that at 7.55 a.m., all right, the tide has gone, uh, gone up enough to be able to deliver goods, all right? And 16 minus 12, that means uh, at 4-something p.m., well, the 0 0.089 times 60 tells me at 4.05 p.m. The tide is starting to go out. But between those two times, they'll be able to boat, to uh, bring goods in. So at 4.05 p.m. is the latest time that she should depart in order to not get the boat stuck at the dock. All right, second example. So a company's profits vary sinusoidally over the years. For simplicity... Let's make the business model assume that there's 360 days in a year and it each month has 30 days, just to make it simpler. So our first high of $25,000 occurs on January 1st at day zero. So here's our first, and we'll just say that's 25K, and this is in dollars, all right? Oh, and I, this was in hours. Dollars on our y-axis, all right, and this is days on the x-axis, and that's at day zero, of course. The next, the, the next low happens on April 1st, which would be at 30 days. So there's 30, 60, or 90 days, 90 days. There's 180 days. There's 270 days. One, two, three, and there's 360 days. All right, so at 90 days, we get our first low of, we'll say, negative 5,000. So we lose money on that one. Okay, and then, of course, at 180, to complete the cycle, if it goes 90 days, then it's going to go another 90. It's back up to 25,000. And another 90 is down below at the negative 5,000. And then at 360, it's back up again at 25,000. So we have one cycle and two cycles of our... And that's what they asked us to sketch. All right, so here's our first and our second cycle. All right, so let's take the 25 and the 5 and add them together and divide by 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. That's our amplitude. All right, and uh, 25 minus 5 divided by 2 is going to be 10, which is our center. Now, this is a, already a negative, so this is minus a minus, so minus a minus, so we're subtracting there, and this is plus a minus, okay, if that would help. All right, because when you add them and divide by 2, you're finding the center, and when you subtract and divide by 2, you're finding your amplitude. All right, so our center is going to be at 15. So he's right there, and it goes up 10 from the center and down 10 from the center. 15 minus 10, or 10, 
10 minus 15 gives me a negative 5, and 10 plus 15 gives me the 25. Whoa. All right, so anyway, we've got 15 as our amplitude cosine because it's starting at a high point. All right, it did all that in a period of 180 days. So the period for one cycle equals 180 days. And 2 pi divided by 180 gives me pi over 90 for my b value. All right, times x, where there's no phase shift if we use the y-axis again. All right, plus the 10. So this was at 10 for our center. And it goes up 15 and down 15 from that center line. All right, so how much profit is on the first 30 days? So we just take our equation, we plug in 30 for x, x equals 30. So our y equals 17.5k or $17,500. Remember I put these in thousands just to be a little simpler. All right, and then on what days of the year does the uh, company break even? Profit of zero. So I want to find all of these points. Well, really, I just have to find the first two, and then I add to that the 2 pi k. So if we think about it, if we take the 15 cosine of pi over 90, x plus 10 and set that equal to 0. Of course, we subtract the 10 and divide by 15. So the pi over 90x equals the arc cosine of that negative 10 over 15. All right, which I did not write that out. Let me get that. All right, so that would be at 2.301. All right, and then, of course, plus 2 pi k. All right, so then, I would, of course, I would multiply both of those things times 90 divided by pi. All right, so this would be plus uh, 180 k. When I do that, I get the pi's reduce. So 2.301 times 90 divided by pi. All right, gives me my first at 65.905. Got a little bit different in the calculator because I rounded. All right. Anyway, so I would personally look at the calculator and find the zeros. All right, so the first one is, uh, these are all in days. So 65.905 and 114 plus... 0 0.095, all right, and then I add 180 to those, plus 180, all right, which would be 245, oops, 245.905, and had a, uh, add a under 180 to that one. And I get the 294.095. All right, so that would be my answers. All right, and I could keep adding 180, and I'll get this the third cycle and the fourth cycle if I just keep adding. So what's the total profits for the year? At day 360, I'm again at $25,000. All right, and again, I got that by plugging in. And 360 for X. All right, all of this was to show you how to get that stuff. All right, and I hope this has been helpful. These are a little confusing. All right, anyway.